Our final destination in our travels through the Cyclades, Tinos, offers a fascinating and surreal journey through time. Welcome to the home of the god of the winds. This is the island of Tinos. So many islands, so little time. From the ancient Roman and Venetian occupations to the Byzantine and Christian eras, it has some of the most impressive and unusual sights you will see in all of the Greek islands. In the distance, not too far behind me, you can see Delos, the home to the gods Apollo and Artemis. But here on Tinos, well, this is the home of Aeolus, the god of the winds, and also the god of the sea himself, Poseidon. We're in his sanctuary, right by the sea on the coast of Tinos, and it was here that the Poseidonia festival was celebrated, the festival of Poseidon himself, where people would gather from all over the ancient Greek world to celebrate this god and to ask for his goodwill as they took on the winds and the seas and headed off around the Aegean as a gift, dropping small bits of gold into the ocean just as they were leaving. Wouldn't it be great if we could start excavating there now? But it is well protected, so don't come with your metal detectors anytime soon. Tinos also had another reason to thank Poseidon, not just as an island with islanders needing to take to the seas at all times, because Poseidon is also said to have rid this island of snakes and made it safe to inhabit once and for all. This was a place that spoke to the dangerous and difficult nature of life in these windy but wonderful islands. What I love about this island is the way that they take such pride in monuments from all different eras of their history. Here's a great example. This is a dovecote. Now, dovecotes were introduced to the island by the Venetians, and of course, they're homes for doves, and doves are often a symbol of peace. But here on the island of Tinos, building a dovecote was also a symbol of prestige. There's almost a thousand of them on the island. And nowadays, they have been lovingly restored as a monument to a particular moment in Tinos's past. And this is just another example of the way the islanders have kept alive practices and ideas from their past. Particularly here today, this is an island renowned for its stone-cutting abilities, abilities that have been lost to the mists of time in many other places. This is the church of the Panagia Evangelistria, the Virgin of the Annunciation, and it houses an icon that is one of the holiest in Greece and an important site of pilgrimage for Orthodox Christians everywhere. So important, in fact, that they will come from the port on their knees up the carpet that runs the 700 meters from the port up the hill to the church to show their veneration for the icon. And how the icon came to be known about is a wonderful story. It was during the Greek War of Independence that a nun was guided by a divine vision to dig and to discover the icon in the ground here on Tinos. And as a result, it was able to be placed in a beautiful church and act as a symbol of hope for centuries to come. The icon portrays the Annunciation of the Virgin Mary as she kneels in prayer with the Archangel Gabriel watching on. It's said to have healing powers and thought to have been created by the Apostle Luke. And this is the very monastery where the nun Agia Palagia had her vision of the icon. It's still an active nunnery to this day. When Constantinople fell 
during the Fourth Crusade. And as a result, the Byzantine Empire fell apart and Greece became open to anyone who wanted to take hold of it. Tinos and the nearby island of Mykonos came under the power of the Venetians. Indeed, Tinos was the longest held Venetian possession in the Aegean. And the result of that today is that it still has the largest Roman Catholic population of any of the Greek islands. And really, this has tended to mean that the Orthodox population and the Catholic population have led their separate lives. This is an Orthodox village, this is a Catholic village, except in three cases. And this is one of them. This is the village of Kardiani, which the name comes from the Greek word kardia, which means heart. And this is a village where Orthodox and Catholic populations live side by side, represented by the fact that here, the Catholic Church is just down the way from the Orthodox Church. Different sects of Christianity living very peacefully side by side. Beneath the church is a fountain drawn from a well that has quenched the thirst of travelers for many years. And as you drink, the Virgin Mary watches over you. The village of Volax nestled in the valley of Volax. It's surrounded by hundreds of huge granite boulders, the remains of a volcanic eruption that took place thousands of years ago. In the winter months, only some 40 people occupy the village. One recent tradition here a local has taken it upon himself to post poetry by famous Greek poets on abandoned houses throughout the village. And so Volax has come to be known as the village of poems. This island really feels like a place full of craftsmanship whether it's the, the marble stone houses in the town of Pyrgos, the continuing traditions of stone cutting, or indeed the wonderful weaving that we can see here. It really is an island with a wonderful past, a creative present, and a fantastic future ahead of it. The village of Agapi. Like most villages throughout the Greek islands, they hold an annual festival in honor of their patron saint. For Agapi, this is Saint Agapitos. The village is Catholic. These vibrant festivals with a shared evening feast and celebrations are a long-standing tradition in the Greek community. This one in particular is very popular with today's young generation. And so this tradition is handed down from one generation to the next. We've managed to explore many of the main islands of the Cyclades archipelago, but there are so many more we just didn't have time to visit. The history of the region is so vast and diverse, it can take years to fully appreciate. As our journey ends, we find Michael in the Tinos village of Hysternia, renowned for the quarrying, cutting, and carving of marble. So, of course, the village itself is largely made of marble, the same stone that has built empires and humble dwellings for Greek villagers. Join me next time as we explore another set of Greek islands in the Aegean on the eastern side of the Aegean Sea, running up the coast of modern-day Turkey, the Dodecanese Islands. We'll be on Rhodes, we'll be on Leros, and we'll be on Sibi. I hope you can join me then. <laughs>